Hi, hopefully you've seen my getting started with Lean 4 video already. Just remember when you watch that video, you might want to set the quality setting to 1080p just to make the text more readable. Once you have the VS Code extension set up, the easiest way to open VS Code on a Lean project is to type code dot from the command line. In this case, I have cloned the Mathlib4 repo and I want to bring it up in VS Code. Boom. Pretty easy. This is the whole Mathlib library here. And it has checked to make sure that this version of the Lean language service is available and running. And now I can take a look at this code and see what's happening. In this video, I assume you have a basic understanding of the Lean language already. The first thing you notice when you open a Lean source file is a thing called the info view pops up on the right. You can close that at any time and reopen it using this button over here and you get back to where it was. The info view shows interesting state about your program, especially about the current location in the file. So as I move the cursor through this program, you can see that the expected type information is changing dynamically to give me an idea of what I need to do to finish this proof. As I go down here, you can see there's some tactic state, there's expected types. As I go down further, I get through different parts of this proof here. I've broken it out into cases and so on. Eventually, when I get to the end of the proof, I see all goals are accomplished and I'm good. So essentially, the info view provides a kind of REPL environment for Lean. When you switch folders, Lean will check that the new folder that you've opened, it'll check the Lean toolchain file and will make sure that this version of Lean is now running to provide language service information and IntelliSense and all of the information that shows up in the info view is coming from the correct version of the Lean language service. In this case, I can look at the version string, which is 619, which is what I was expecting. There's some fun buttons over here in the info view that I'll explain. First one here is copy message to comment. It's just a quick way of grabbing a snapshot of what's in the info view and putting it over here as a comment in your program. You can also expand all messages that are coming from this file and you can use the reveal file location to find out where that message is coming from. So 720 is coming from factorial six. Here I'm calling the factorial function that's defined right here and I can jump to that location. You can then collapse all messages if you want to focus only on what you're currently pointing at. So if I'm looking at the main function, the message here is just the message for the current cursor location. Sometimes you want to look at two locations at once. I'm going to edit the foo definition, but I want to see what it does to the main function when I do that, because I can see here that the main function is using the foo definition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin the main function to be always visible in the info view. And when I go to foo, I can now see the expected type information for the current line, but I can also see the main function as well. And both of these are going to update in real time. So I can see that the main function changed as I expected it. You can also, if it's too expensive to do sort of real-time updating of all of your pinned blocks here, you can also pause that so it stops updating. Now when I update this thing, it's not updating at all over here until I unpause it or resume. Now it's updated. You can also at any point unpin this and that whole block will disappear and we'll go back to the single block for wherever the current cursor location is. Now, no language is complete without go to definition. Here I'm using a print line function and I can use F12 or go to definition, this one here, to jump to the definition of print line. Now, what that just did is it jumped over to a io.lean file that shipped with the lean for nightly build dated 619, because that's what I'm currently using. And it's opened up that source file from, from that toolchain installation. This is a really great way to learn how Lean works because I can now see that print line is a function. It has a context here of two string. Two string is a type class that has a two string method. And I can see different instances of two string here. Some of them working on different types and so on. And now I'm learning how the print line function works. At any point, you can close those and go back to what you're doing. You can also do go to definition using control click. So down here, I can see there's a factorial. I, I'm calling the factorial function. If I hold down the control key, there's an underline that shows up and a cursor changes to a hand. And when I click it, it does a jump to definition here. Let's do that again over on foo, jumps to foo. What about bar, where's that? 
Okay, this jumped over to test.lane where a bar is defined. I can go back. You can also control click some things that show up in the info view. Down here in the factorial function, I can see that it's expecting a type of NAT. And maybe I want to learn more about NAT. If I hold down the control key and click it, this will also jump to the definition of NAT. NAT is an inductive type. The other thing that's really handy when you're programming any language is IntelliSense. So you can get IntelliSense. I know there's some things in the array namespace, but this list gives me a quick summary of everything that's there. So I can see there's an append function in the array namespace, which takes two arrays and reproduces an array. So now I know I can, I can do one, two, three. I know that the second argument must be an array as well. Four, five, and now I've got a complete call to the array.append function. Notice when I hover over that append keyword, it also gives me a summary of the function prototype there. And you can see the result of the evaluation of that append function over here where I've got now the fully appended arrays. Lean allows you to use all kinds of fun Unicode symbols in your programs, like this Lambda character over here and the AND symbol for my uh, propositional logic here. This means that all Lean files are UTF-8 encoded. Notice you can hover over those Greek letters and get a tooltip showing you how to type that letter in using the abbreviation syntax that starts with a backslash. So backslash LA will produce a Lambda. Let's see if that's true. Backslash LA. To complete it, I have to do one more character. Usually it's a space and bingo, there's my Lambda. So let's put that in a string literal and sure enough, Looks like it works over here. You can get a cheat sheet of all abbreviations from the lean4 command called show all abbreviations. You can also search this if there's a particular thing you're looking for. So there's a shortcut for the special symbol for natural numbers. I could copy that from here, or I can just use backslash nat to type it in. All right, now that I know that, I can go ahead and enter my handy notation for natural numbers. And of course, I can use that down here using that abbreviation again. And I still get 720, everything's working. There's also another command to bring up, up the documentation view. Over here, we have a link to the Theorem Proving in Lean book, as well as the cheat sheet and some example code. Let's open the book. And now I can read the book here in line, right while I'm programming in Lean. That's handy. I'm going to jump over to propositions and proofs and scroll down to some fun proofs. There's one and use the try it button. So while you're reading this book, you can just grab that snippet and open it immediately in a new file. And it comes up here in the editor and everything works as well. So this is also live now editing this program. This EM function here looks interesting. Let's control click that and go jump to it and see what it does. Oh yeah, that looks like fun. Again, now I can go through here and I can see tactic states and so on, expected types for this theorem. Sometimes these things get quite big. So there's also a filter button and you can turn off certain things. This doesn't have any instances, but you can hide some of these things as well and uh, reduce the size of this list here. You can also reverse the sorting in case you want the goal to be shown at the top and uh, everything else in reverse order. Notice that the try it code showed up in a new untitled window. So this is a, a new document that doesn't belong to this project at all. It didn't add, didn't edit my project. It just created a temporary file. So I can close that and get rid of it at any point. This brings us to projects and workspaces. If I close this folder that I've opened, I can create a new file type text and make it a lean4 file. And now I have a lean program up and running with uh, you know evaluations working, the lean servers running on a file that has no project. The reason that worked is because my toolchain includes a default toolchain. Elon toolchain list shows there's a default toolchain here. So that's the, what it's using in this case. There's another feature of VS Code, which is called workspaces. And workspaces allow you to have multiple folders where each folder is itself a separate lean project that could potentially have different lean versions. I've got one of those right here called multi. Let's open that. So now I've got two folders open, a folder called foo, which has a lean toolchain of stable, and a folder called test, which has a toolchain of nightly. If I open this program, it 
checks that that gets the lean language server running and I can see 621. Everything's good. If I open this one, then all of a sudden down here, it's downloading the lean component. You can always find out what's going on by going to the output tab and selecting lean editor. I already had it open, but if you want to watch the details of what it's doing in the background here, you can always remember to open that output panel. It's now installing that version of lean that I asked for. And now over here, I can see that's a different version of lean than over here. Yep, so that one's nightly and this one's commit. So I have two different versions of the lean language server running behind these two folders. If you watch all of the processes running here, you'll see that there are multiple lean servers running to support those different versions. You can see there's a lake process, which is for building the code. There is a server, dash dash server, and then there's a dash dash worker for each source file within that project that I'm editing. If I close that source file, the worker process should disappear. Okay. But the server processes stay running until I close everything. Then all of that goes away. Now, if I go back to my test project, I'm going to deliberately try and crash the lean server just to show you what that looks like and how you can recover. So I'm going to make this factorial function something that never terminates. And instantly I see all this output and I see all of these problems being reported. I can see up here that there's information about this might have been a stack overflow. You know, be careful what you're doing here. Could have been a stack overflow is in the output tab. You can close all those. I'm going to fix my program, but nothing's updating here. So this is sort of because the server crashed, it's just not running. I can use the lean4 command then to manually restart the server. And now we're back in business. So factorial 7 is coming up and it's updating and so on. There's one last command I want to explain, which is the refresh file dependencies command. What that guy does is updates any other files that you've edited so that the information you get uh, in this file is correct. So for example, this main function uses bar and bar is defined over here. If I change this function and get rid of those question marks and go back to main, the main function still contains those question marks. Even if I'm editing the file here, it's not updating. If I now use refresh file dependencies, then those question marks disappear. This is sort of a, a little optimization in lean. If the lean language server was constantly recompiling everything in the background and you had a really big project like Mathlib 4, it might get too slow. So this gives you control over when you want to have those other files compiled and included in the program that you're editing here. All right, that's a wrap. Hopefully this will help you get the most out of the VS Code extension for lean and help you really enjoy learning this amazing new language.